afternoon, graduates and esteemed guests. Welcome to the commencement ceremony for the class of 2021 College of Medicine and the College of Graduate Studies for the Master's in Pharmaceutical Sciences program. Let's officially begin our commencement with a procession of our graduates led by Mace Bear, Dr. Nependri Dillon. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, graduates and esteemed guests. Welcome to the commencement ceremony for the class of 2021 College of Medicine and the College of Graduate Studies for the Master's in Pharmaceutical Sciences program. Let's officially begin our commencement with the procession of our graduates led by Mace Bear, Dr. Nipendri Dillon. Please rise for the singing of our national anthem by Haley Barak. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket regular the bombs bursting flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium the founding president and CEO of California North State University, Dr. Alvin Chung. Good afternoon and welcome. Please be seated. Today is a very exciting day. I'd like to start this afternoon by, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculties of the university, I'm pleased to welcome you all, the class of 2021 commencement of California North State University, College of Medicine, and the College of Graduate Studies, Master of Pharmaceutical Sciences program. After rounds of highly selective admission process and years of vigorous study, today, the 15th of May, 2021, marks an important milestone of your life, the class of 2021. On, that be, on behalf of the university, I congratulate each and every one of you on your achievements. Recognizing years of discipline, effort, and intense studies. For you to earn this high honor, not only for yourself, but for your family members and those associated with you. And I also want to personally thank each and every one of you that you choose medicine. I hope after today, you reach deep into your heart and begin your day to learn more medicine 
and serve humanity and make a difference. I also want to acknowledge the significant contributions of the outstanding faculty under the leadership of the Dean of College of Medicine, Dr. Joseph Silver, who has provided the intellectual opportunities and the persistent encouragement that enable you to achieve your goals. And clearly, your graduation today is a special tribute to your family, friends, and without their enduring support, today would not have come to pass. So, clearly, your graduation today is of significant collective effort to make it a reality for all of us, for you, the class of 2021, and also to the benefit of the community that they are expecting to receive your service. The university will follow your professional career with continuing interest. And again, we welcome each of you, the graduates, family members, and friends. With that, I would like to uh, recognize uh, our Board of Trustees and as well as the Board of Directors who many years ago put the effort together uh, to build this university and the College of Medicine. So, at this point, I would like to, something wrong with the technology here. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that marked this particular year, the year of, uh, the academic year of 20, 2021, is the fact that you begin part of your clerkship, part of your clerkship for the last 15 months in the midst of pandemic. And this is a very strong test of your resolve. And confront the reality and the professional hazard and unwavering effort to ensure that you continue through your process of learning medicine. So that's another great testament of your commitment to your career and the practice of medicine. So I would at this time uh, like to uh, invite uh, the Dean of School of Medicine, Joseph Silva, to deliver his special message. Thank you. Wow, you finally made it, both groups of graduates today. Fantastic. Um, this is your day. It's also the day of your family and children and friends who helped you along this long road. Uh, I've been involved in medical education over 55 years now. And I've probably been over 100 graduations in the various places I've been. And I've witnessed a lot of societal changes, but I've never witnessed one like we have with the COVID virus. It's so pervasive, it's changed the world, it's gonna to continue to change. It put a breach between us, the faculty, and the students, we always saw you. But we had enduring values, which you have learned, and I congratulate graduates of both colleges. 
Uh, it's been a tough year, but I think in the long run, you'll be known as the COVID generation, and you will definitely excel because you've been through hell. So I will go to my formal addresses now. Uh, President Chung, thank you very much for the introduction. Doff my hat. I also doff my hat to our guest speaker, to our board of directors and our board of trustees, and to my fellow deans that have accompanied me up on this podium. I want to start with a story. When I was a young boy, believe it or not, 70 years ago, 70, I know, I try to shorten it. <laughs> there was a pond nearby my neighborhood where my friends and I contested by throwing pebbles at the surface. We were in an inner city ghetto area, a lot of blacks, the spread of people from the Puerto Rico, Caribbean countries, and Central America, and a number of people from the ex-Slovak uh, states. So we had a limited finance as a general group and often invested games to play outside the home. For many of you, television was still years away. Imagine, no TV. But we had radios. The movies cost 25 cents and computers were still 25 years away, which is the middle of your activity now. During these games, we used pennies as bets. Well, you may say, that was dumb. What did you bet on? Well, actually, many things. How far you could throw the pebbles, how many ripples emanated from the initial crater on the surface, how far ripples traveled, and how many bounces or skips did that tiny, tiny stone travel before sinking. Contests sometimes got heated, and quite frankly, I was terrible at it, resulting in my pockets often being emptied of pennies. So where does this short story take us? Well, from this day onward, you will carry the title doctor. Congratulations, doctors, and also our students from the pharmacy college. Your tools are your abilities to provide advice, compassion, empathy, sometimes a drug, sometimes a surgery. In fact, you need to learn how to listen and provide support and hope. Most of you in your clinical careers would deal with treatment and relief of illnesses without any drugs or surgery. Because of your skills and values, society will treat you differentially and usually with respect and indulgences. Be careful not to become too grandiose or egotistical from such treatments. You are not a god, nor can you perform miracles. You are simply a person who has been given the rights and privileges to be a healer. You will soon pledge your commitments for all of us to hear. Remember to periodically assess what the impact, or let me substitute, ripple, you will have on your patients' lives. Anytime you see a patient and make their lives better, either through therapy or compassion, it involves a ripple effect. It often assists the families and friends and coworkers whether we are actually given help or just understanding. Some of these ripples will be enduring and travel 20 to 30 years into the future. They will be of many types, rivulets, choppy, swells, roars, and even some tsunamis. By tossing a stone into a pond, your actions in medicine can have effects far beyond where the pebble landed. So with this challenge, Go with God and generate many, many beneficial ripples. Congratulations.
Please give a warm welcome to the Vice President of Academic Affairs, Associate Dean of Medical Education, and the Dean of our Graduate Studies Program, Dr. Katherine Young. Good afternoon, everyone. Dear President Doc Chong, members of the Board of Trustee, Board of Directors, faculty, staff, proud families, and MPS graduates, it is my great honor to speak to you for our 2021 CNU commencement graduate study. Class of 2021 MPS, we are here to celebrate the graduation of our MPS class. You are the courageous pioneers who choose this incredible pharmaceutical science journey with us at California North State University. We are forever grateful for your trust and commitment. We are particularly impressed by your dedication in pursuing the master's degree of pharmaceutical sciences. Your determination, focus, and the resilience have helped you to become who you are today. We are very appreciative that together, you and the MPS have faculty have built and shaped our program at this extraordinary time, which speaks wonders about your professionalism and the leadership quality. Your strong participation in supporting our CNU vaccine clinic has reflected your compassion, volunteerism, and character to the public health. The class of 2021 will always have a special place in our hearts. From this point on, your life is in your own hands. Your learning does not stop here. The best lessons from CNU are the skills in critical thinking and active learning. You will not get very far based on what you know now. You will only advance through what you will learn after you leave here. Scholarship is a responsibility because it is only through continuous learning that we can add to those vast knowledge of mankind. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. You must find what you love, and then you will be truly satisfied doing great work. Life throws random things at you, and it is a series of making decisions. Your willingness to succeed will define you. Pay attention to small and simple things. You will not be able to succeed with the big things if you cannot get small things right. Dean Silver spoke to me last week in his office. He pointed a whole bunch of student issues to me and said that he would like to trade in with me for one extra minute for commencement speaking time if I can deal with them. I was shocked that only one extra minute for all those headaches. He said one minute means a lot at the commencement. I thought a second and felt that our founding dean must understand the time value better than me. I took the proposition and remember, even after you graduate, you still need to do extra credit. I noticed that Dean Silva actually saved a minute for me if I'm one minute over, please count it on him. <laughs> Follow your passion. Be curious, imaginative, and willing to take risk. Be fearless. No risk means no big success. You are the products of us taking a risk. Having a master's degree of pharmaceutical sciences means you are categorized as a scholar with the intellectual capacity. You will then exercise some control over how and what you think about the learning, observation, evidence-based analysis on technology development. How much you are willing to spend your moral and intellectual capital 
outside the walls of CNU will shape how fruitful your career and life will be. Take action. Every successful story you have ever connected with, every scientist you have ever admired, every tiny little thing that you have ever accomplished is the result of taking action. You have choices. You can either be a victim of a circumstance or you can be the hero of your own life. This past year, we have been enduring an extraordinary time, the COVID-19 pandemic, which impacts life around the world. We still do not fully understand this nanometer-sized RNA-based coronavirus. The public is more than ever to turn their expectations and hopes to the healthcare providers and the pharmaceutical scientists like you to be able to develop more sensitive diagnosis kits, more effective antivirus medications, and vaccines for all age groups. These expectations propels pharmaceutical scientists like you to the forefront. All aspects of your work in your research here at CNU, whether trying to understand the virus system or searching for more effective drugs against the coronavirus or other disease targets will contribute to the advancement of the sciences. Your future endeavor in pharmaceutical sciences will have a significant impact on the public health, technology innovation, economics, and particularly your career purpose. Please remember to share your future accomplishments and personal growth stories with us. You are always part of our CNU family. Congratulations again to you, Class 2021, and your family. Coming up next, we have our class valedictorians. First, from the College of Medicine, please welcome Han Cindy Lamb. As a first generation immigrant, I came from a world where both of my parents didn't even get a chance to finish middle school. A world where we have to deal with poverty for most of our life. Four years ago, I didn't even think it was possible for me to go to medical school. So when I finally get that acceptance letter from CNU, it was one of the best days of my life. But let me tell you, that day compared to today, this moment, it's nothing like it. It is beyond my greatest honor and my wildest dream to be standing here behind this podium and to be representing the graduating class of 2021. For our graduating seniors, this moment has been years in the making and it, and it involved a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. In case someone is wondering, the blood mainly belongs to our patients, but the tears, they're completely our own. All these years of preparation and training, just waiting for that one single magical moment when someone on the plane yells, is there a doctor on board? Well, fortunately after today, we can all legally raise our hands and say yes. Today is a day to celebrate our success and our achievements, but it is also a day to celebrate the unsung heroes. They are our amazing families and friends, and also our incredible faculties and mentors. Because without all these years of their sacrifices and their unconditional support, we would not be sitting on this stage right now. I also want to take a second to thank the genius who invented the 2x speed play button, 
Whoever they are, they have definitely made the past four years of medical school a lot more sufferable. I remember we were often told that medical school is like trying to drink water from a fire hydrant because of the immense amount of information that we must process, learn, and then regurgitate in a short amount of time. For those in the audience who have never tried drinking from a fire hydrant before, I wouldn't recommend it, no, it's not pretty. Now imagine how silly you would look trying to do it alone. But take a moment to imagine 94 people all trying to drink from the same hydrant. All of a sudden, you don't look so silly anymore. And that's the power of community. For the last four years, that's exactly what we have built here in CNU. We have built a beautiful community where we can learn from each other, lean on each other, and draw our strength from each other. And in the process, we had our many firsts. Treating our first patient, doing our first prostate exam, delivering our first baby, suturing human skin for the first time. And one of my all-time favorite, having the honor to cut into a fellow human being. That is a first that I will never forget. In just four years, we have involved ourselves from every stage of life, from the miracle of childbirth to the inevitable process of death and everything in between. Not only have we grown from the experience, but we have also become stronger, closer, and more resilient because we did it together as a family. Every first and every encounter after bring us closer and closer to our ultimate goal, which is to become a healer and to fulfill our promise to make this world a better place. If you think about it, in a sense, we're even cooler than the Avengers because despite all their superpower, they spend more than 90% of the movie trying to blow up people and building. We, on the other hand, will be dedicating the rest of our life into piecing them back together. Of course, there will be roadblocks and obstacles along the way. In fact, in a month or so, when we start our residency training, we'll all be running around like headless chickens. Mistakes will be made, and we'll continue to make them throughout our career. Things may not, and most likely will not, go the way that we plan. In this difficult time, I want to implore you all to have courage. Have the courage to say, I don't know, but I will keep trying to figure out the answers. The courage to admit it when you have made a mistake. The courage to speak up when something is not right. And lastly, the courage to do what we have always done, which is to lean on each other when things get difficult. So to the faculties and administrators who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make CNU a better place, we thank you. To the teachers and mentors who never gave up, who never gave up on their students, despite the amount of time that we disappoint. We thank you. And to our friends and family who supported us throughout all these years, I really hope we have made you proud. And to the class of 2021, we did it. At the end of today, we'll all be doctors. Just remember to always keep calm and stay awesome. Congratulations, class of 2021. Next, from the Master in Pharmaceutical Sciences program, please welcome Michael Roche. Welcome, everyone. It is a great honor to have the opportunity to speak before you all today. I would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank those who have made the past two years at California North State University such a memorable and rewarding experience. To my parents and extended family, your steadfast support 
over the past two years has given me the strength to pursue my dreams. Without it, I would not be standing before you all today. To my fellow MPS graduates, your hard work and resolve throughout our challenging program has both impressed and inspired me. I know your futures are bright. To the MPS faculty, the knowledge, wisdom, and guidance you have bestowed upon me have been instrumental for my personal and professional growth and have given me the strong foundation to succeed in medical school and beyond. The Master of Pharmaceutical Science degree program has not been easy peasy, as my research advisor, Dr. Farahat, would say. The MPS class of 2021 has faced many rigorous academic challenges over the past two years, including a demanding course load, studying for months for the medical college admissions test or other graduate exams, and a one to two year thesis research or capstone project that culminated in a formal presentation and defense. All the while dealing with a global pandemic, which has provided its own set of challenges, including distance learning, a lack of social interaction, added stress, and uncertainty. My amazing classmates have overcome all of those challenges to be here before you today. I could not be more proud of each and every one of them. These fine men and women represent the future. Future physicians, scientists, pharmacists, and dentists. Leaders who will use the knowledge and training gained through the MPS program to propel them to new heights, to make new scientific discoveries or provide state-of-the-art health care to their patients. These are real leaders that will make a significant impact in the world. My, now, there will be challenges on the road ahead, but have faith, for you are not on your journey alone. Through our shared experiences at CNU over the past two years, the countless hours studying together, the class potlucks, game nights, and town halls, we have developed bonds with our fellow classmates and faculty, bonds that can last a lifetime. These are people you can lean on for support and advice on your journey. You should also have faith in yourselves. Your successful completion of the rigorous Master of Pharmaceutical Science degree program during such trying times is a tremendous achievement. And your success will give you confidence as you face new challenges in the coming years. There is a saying that if you conquer your mind, you can conquer the world. You have the potential to reach your dreams no matter how big they may be. If you follow your passion, work hard, believe in yourself, and never ever give up, all of your dreams can one day come true. I believe in each and every one of you, and I know that you will continue to amaze and inspire in the years to come. Thank you all for your time, and you have my best wishes for your continued success. Thank you. And now, please welcome to the podium the Associate Dean of Academic and Career Advising, Dr. Michael S. Wong. Good afternoon, all. It's my distinct privilege and pleasure to be able to introduce our keynote speaker for today's commencement ceremonies today. As it is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, I am proud to share, she is the first Asian American woman to serve as the president of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. This is the largest organization of plastic surgeons in the world. She is a longtime advocate for the House of Medicine, 
with years of commitment and service to the American Medical Association, where she currently serves as a delegate to the AMA's House of Delegates. There she serves as the chair of plastic, reconstructive, and maxillofacial surgery section. She is also one of the 11, she is also one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, she is also one of the 11 members of the AMA's Council on Medical Service. She is the Chief Medical Officer of St. Joseph's, St. John's Hospital in Ventura County, where she also serves as the Director of the Breast Integrated Program. She is also Assistant Pro Clinical Professor of Plastic Surgery at USC. She also runs a very successful clinical private practice where she specializes in aesthetic and reconstructive breast surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, honored guests, and graduates 2021, please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker for today, my dear friend, Dr. Lynn Jeffers. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Good afternoon. To the president, the dean, trustees, faculty, parents, families, and friends, and most especially the class of 2021, congratulations. I'm truly honored to be a part of your special day. Today is a day of celebration, but it's also a day of reflection. But your graduation is not only about today, it is so much more. It's a testament to all of your hard work, all of the obstacles and hardships that you might have had to overcome, the sacrifices in time and finances, not only of yourself, but by those who have been your support system, your grandparents, parents, siblings and friends, to that special teacher or mentor. You've all heard the phrase that we stand on the shoulders of giants. I want you to look around this arena and find your giants, and join me in thanking all of those who have helped you along your way. Well, I think we can all agree that this has been a year unlike any other. And uh, you not only weathered COVID, but you might have lost a loved one, you faced hardships, isolation, or witnessed injustices. But you guys didn't just stand by. You and your classmates stepped up, volunteered at vaccination clinics, took care of the community, your patients, each other. And you did this while trying to get through med school with the challenges of canceled rotations, virtual matches, and a canceled step two CS exam. Well, okay, maybe that one was a good one. As the chief medical officer of my hospital, I helped to lead the COVID response and the rollout of COVID vaccination clinics as well as COVID testing at our two hospitals. At the same time, as you heard, I was president of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons and I headed their COVID response. And then as a plastic surgeon in private practice, married to an orthopedic surgeon and having a uh, son in the first year of medical school, I saw firsthand the impact that COVID had on physicians and their practices, aspiring physicians, as well as hospitals and medical organizations. But in every crisis, there is an opportunity for growth. And now, now that that third surge and hopefully that last surge of COVID has occurred in, the, in California, and now that I'm getting more than 90 minutes of sleep a day, I had some time to think about what we've been going through and what we've learned. And now those things fit on one hand. First, learn. Don't be afraid to ask the difficult questions. Now during COVID, the official recommendations, if you remember, would change maybe every 12 hours. And all eyes were on us, those people in the medical field who were able to build on our foundational knowledge that we had acquired through our years of schooling and experience. Now, who would have thought that biology and genetics that we've studied and, heck, even the word mRNA would make mainstream media? 
Let's today reaffirm our commitment to continuous learning, even after this crisis. Ask why, seek truth, and be open to dissenting opinions, just as you would for conflicting symptoms in your differential diagnosis. Okay, second, engage. Commit to care. Commit to never, never sit on the sidelines. You've worked so hard and accomplished so much. Don't stop now. You've signed up for a life of service to your patients and your profession. Please serve them well. And to me, when we engage, we decide to care. We choose not to sit on the sidelines. And I firmly believe it's our obligation as leaders in healthcare, our communities, to engage. And as an old Chinese proverb counsels, whenever you drink the water, or apparently from a fire hydrant in this case, you must replenish the well. And that's why I'm a huge supporter of organized medicine. And as you heard, I currently serve on the Council of American Medical Association and have served on a board or been president of medical organizations at the national, state, and local level. I urge you to join your medical societies and your specialty societies. In fact, do more than join. Choose to be active. Choose to make a difference and find your niche. When I was a medical student, I helped pass this resolution at the AMA that ultimately led to a legislation that required insurance companies to pay for breast cancer reconstruction. Little did I know that 25 years later, I would personally benefit from that law as a patient myself. So admittedly, I don't always agree with everything my organizations do, but I write the dues checks anyway, because it's a way of investing in my profession's future and now your future. So I ask you today to commit, to engage. You never know the dividends of your investment and what they may bring. All right, third, lead, inspire change. Leaders bring people together who then build upon each other's passions, and the result is so much more than the sum of its parts. But just bringing people together isn't enough. To be most effective, you have to help your team channel its why. So very early in the pandemic, maybe April 2020, one of our local doctors had a very sick COVID patient in the ICU. Well, it just so happened that he also had treated the very first COVID patient in our county. So he came to me as a CMO and said, hey, he would like to use the plasma from the first patient, and that would have antibodies and maybe help the person in the ICU fight off ice, the COVID. Well, time was of an essence, so we quickly gathered about 20 people from the lab, pathology, the blood bank, ICU, pharmacy, nursing, physicians, IRB, ethics, legal, you name it. There were a lot of people. It was a big group. But the idea was we needed to know if we could even do this, and we needed everyone's input. And even if we could do it, how would we do it ethically and correctly? So after a great discussion and problem-solving session, we were actually able to administer the very first convalescent plasma treatment in our region. But more importantly than that, and more striking, was the passion of the people of everyone involved. That energy was electric, and the synergy is what made this happen. And we became a resource for other programs and other hospitals. We sent plasma to sister hospitals in other states, and we helped other people start their own programs. Now that is the power of leadership and passion. When a team works together, you know it. You truly are working together. Amazing things, great things happen. Okay, fourth, the human touch. There is no substitute. COVID shows us what happens when there's social isolation. Even though distance learning carried out the task of education, and Zoom calls allowed meetings to happen and virtual family visits, there was something vital missing. Because as humans, we're more than transactional beings. The non-transactional part of our lives can be just as important as the pills and potions that we have at our disposal. Caring for others, giving hugs, holding a hand, an extra moment at the bedside, these lessen loneliness and, surf and suffering, and they connect us as humans. When no visitors were allowed in our hospital, 
Our patients may have received excellent clinical care, but we know that health and well-being is more than that, more than any FaceTime call with family could fill. We must never forget that we are medical professions second and human beings first. Now, I love tech in innovation. I even created a presidential task force on technology innovation and disruption. But in medicine, where we have supposedly evolved from the wisdom of the mature physician to this evidence-based medicine, has in some instances led to this overuse of checkbox algorithms. You know what I'm talking about. And the problem is that our current methods accumulate all this data to try to figure out what works for the average population. And it tries to put people who are maybe square pegs into treatments that are round holes. We all know in situations where the patient on paper looks okay, their labs look fine, their studies look okay, but you see this patient and you just know that something isn't right and you can't put your finger on it. You can train your brain to pick up those subjective, unconscious signals. Call it instinct, intuition, wisdom, whatever you call it. It's the part that humans bring that can't be measured. It's a part that a machine, even with all the current AI technology, cannot do. But if we put together big data, artificial intelligence with human wisdom, then we might be able to flip that paradigm so that data is used to fit the patient, precision medicine, instead of trying to make people fit the data. So don't allow yourself to become only a box checker. This is what differentiates a professional from an algorithm. Don't let others relegate you to be only a cog in the wheel. Our patients are counting on us to be more, feel more, think more, and do more to preserve that human touch in medicine. All right, well, finally, fifth, believe. Believe in the power of one. When I told a friend I was speaking here today, and what I wanted to say. She recalled her own high school graduation more years ago than she wants to admit. And the speaker titled his remarks, How Long Is Your Shadow? His premise was, you affect everyone that you touch and in turn, everyone that they touch. He then charged to the graduates to cast long shadows because you never know who's watching. The impact of your deeds the consequences those deeds may set in motion. During the pandemic, one ASPS member's inquiry to me about how they might loan their ventilators during the first crisis in New York led me to start an online clearinghouse for our members to donate PPE and ventilators. Well, this caught the attention of the White House and FEMA and ultimately led to ASPS helping to source over six million masks to New York and other states. Now that is the power of one person asking the right question. Whether it's your vocation, literally your life's work in medicine, or your avocation, the work that you do outside of medicine, I challenge you, my soon-to-be colleagues, to cast very long shadows as today you celebrate the official beginning of your professional journey. Congratulations, class of 2021. I congratulate you on this momentous occasion. I thank you for allowing me to be part of your special day. And now, let's welcome back to the podium our university president, Dr. Alvin Chung, for the conferral of degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the California North State University, I hereby confer upon each and every one of you, members of the class of 2021 College of Medicine and members of the graduating class, College of Graduate Study, the Master of Pharmaceutical Sciences. For the College of Medicine, the doctoral degree in medicine. For the College of Graduate Study, 
Master of Pharmaceutical Science. I want to provide you this gentle reminder with the hope that you will keep this with the rest of your life as you join on in your professional career. Learning does not end today. Learning will carry you into new avenues of service and professional leadership. As you graduate today, our challenge to you from this point on is to temper the power of feeling with the power of thought and to face each day with the determination to be rational and with the grace to be compassionate and the courage to, en to engage your work with integrity and with respect for one another and relating to one another with respect and integrity will turn out to be the highest tribute to your character. In doing so, you will not only become a respected professional, but you will all become a good and wise person. So, I invite your family, the faculty, and your friends to join me in saluting the graduating class of 2021, and as well as the graduate of both, both programs. Thank you. You may now turn your tassel from your right side to your left. This signify your becoming from a student transforming to be a graduate and now you have the opportunity to serve humanity as well as the society. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite the Dean, first the Dean of College of Medicine, to give out the diploma, Dean Silva. And now, to award diplomas and introduce the College of Medicine graduates, Please welcome to the podium, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and Admissions, Dr. Tanya Arana, and the Dean of the College of Medicine, Dr. Joseph Silva. So it's my great pleasure and honor to present to you the graduate of California North State University College of Medicine, class of 2021. Adnan Abutala. Hamza Abu Hussein. Prajian Adikari. Kuvita Arul Mozi. Kevin Ashley.
Narek Asrian. Mustafa Barhaman. Gabriel Evan Bodwin. Patrick Yeniek. Shane Blanc. Yusef Chang. Courtney Chin. Isaac Chuang. Alana Nicole Corey. Shabani Dandekar. Manvir Dillon. Michelle Doe. Jessica Doctor. Oscar Escobedo, Jr. Joshua Michael Fisher. Casey Garrett. Curran Giberson. Jasmine Gosen. Radhika Gular. Pranima Gurum. Hilary Gutierrez. Jordan Hastings. Chelsea Heyman. Catherine Ho. Diana Hung. Mark Sue Jacqueline Z Jans Christopher Jin Stella Joe Marjan Carey Edward King. Taylor Ross Kitson. Han Cindy Lin. Han Cindy Lin. Brittany Lau. Matthew Huayin Lee. Sharon May Lee. Ann Liao. Ethan Luong. Eileen Lee. Frank Ma. Jean Michelle Martin, Padide Maymar, Alan Megordichin, Z 
Zev Minow. Karine Musa. Jaspreet Singh Nukai. Melinda Ng. Alexander Wynn. Michelle Mylan Foots Nguyen. Thomas Nguyen. <laughs> McKenna Owen. Katrina Paseo. Neil Patel. David Fan. Cole Pierce. Sarah Romani. Brittany Renee Randall. Marshall Roberts. Nicholas Sabin. Daniela Lent Shokit. Kumin Shim. Ryan Sue. Steven Springer. Tiffany Stewart. Danish Unwala. Dayu Judy Wong. Kevin Wang. Thomas Charles Weber. James Ozaki Wall. Pia Xiong. Yiguan Angie Zhang. So we would also like to recognize all the graduates from the class of 2021 who were not able to be with us today. So please bring your attention to the screens above where their names and photos will be displayed so we can recognize them. for the College of Medicine. This is our third class. We have now trained and out in the community 233 graduates from the College of Medicine at California North State. And in this class today, we have uh, 11 of them that are taking on national commissions to serve our military. So congratulations, class. And now, to award diplomas and introduce the Masters in Pharmaceutical Science graduates, please welcome to the podium, Dean of the College of Graduate Studies, Dr. Katherine Young, and the Director, Master of Pharmaceutical Sciences, College of Graduate Studies, Assistant Professor of Virology, Department Basic Sciences, College of Medicine, Dr. Ahmed El Shimi.
Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure today to introduce uh, our class uh, of 2021 Master of Pharmaceutical Science graduates. Michael Rosh. Joshua Anoli. Arya Asgari. Amir Bakshi. Natalie Chavez. Good job, Natalie. Victoria Chan. Whitney Gillespie. Caroline Goswami. Dorsa Hidarlo. Satori Owamoto. Mari Jabari. Rachanth Krop. Minyao Liu. Sheila Moore. Bohar Kor Mohar. Monica Nala. Hannah Niger. Angela Penny. Austin Q. Tina Vimaroon. Michelle Sundarovich. Yuan Darso. Olivia Wu. Finally, we would like also to uh, recognize those graduates from MPS class 2021 who are unable to make it today to participate in our ceremony. Please bring your attention to the screen above where their names and photos are displayed. Thank you, everyone. This is conclude the introduction of the Master of Pharmaceutical Science program class 2021. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Class 2021 MPS. And finally, please welcome to the podium the Vice Dean of the College of Medicine, Dr. Reginald Lowe, who will administer the recital of oath. 
Thank you very much. I'd like to add my congratulations uh, to the California North State University College of Medicine class of 2021 and your entrance into the medical profession. It's a privilege for me and an honor for me to be able to administer the oath. You've completed 20 years of formal education with the last four years being a very intensive medical curriculum that I hope will be the foundation for all your future learning. This marks the end of a phase in your life and the beginning of a new phase. And that phase is something that is very special because you have become a physician. You've earned the privilege of entering the medical profession, and I know of no profession that is more stimulating and rewarding than the practice of medicine. It's truly an honorable and noble profession. We want to inspire you to be the best physician that you can be. And I hope that you will always keep CNU College of Medicine dear in your heart and remember all that the university has given to you and the opportunity that it will open for you in the future. I can honestly tell you that you don't even have any concept of what's out there for you, and there are no limits to what you'll be able to do. By taking the oath, you express voluntary acceptance of a code of ethics. This acts as acknowledgement to society that the medical profession is guided by a common ethical code. Graduates, please stand. And I would invite uh, other physicians that want to reaffirm the physician pledge to stand as well, and there may be many family members as well. I'd like you to repeat after me. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit consideration of age, disease, disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I guess I should have referred you to your uh, program. <laughs> I will respect the confidentiality of my patient even after their death. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble tradition of the medical profession. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. 
I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Congratulations, doctors. Congratulations, class of 2021. You should be very proud. Class of 2021, congratulations, and you have done it! <laughs> so at this time, we would like to uh, invite a faculty member up here. Uh, is that Dr. Osami? To come up here and bring the maze, you know, and lead us uh, to complete the, the recession. Thank you. Oh, sorry. My apologies, Dr. Hong Bin Wong, to carry the maze and lead us for the recession. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to the 2021 College of Medicine graduates and the College of Graduate Studies graduates in the Master of Pharmaceutical Sciences program. As the graduates recess out of the arena, let's recognize our special award winners for the College of Medicine. The Office of Medical Education Award for Academic Excellence goes to Gabriel Evan Bodwin, Tess Hill, Teal Ross Kitson, Brittany Yan Lau, and Ryan Su. The Calm Class of 2021 Valedictorian Award goes to Han Cindy Lam. The Excellence in Research and Scholarly Award goes to David Mendel Gross, Daniela Lent Scotia, and Hera Wu. The Excellence in Service Award goes to Radhika Gulhar. The Founding Dean Silva Award goes to Chelsea Victoria Heyman. The President's Scholarship goes to Pernima Guram. The Tuition Assistance Scholarship goes to McKenna Noel Marty. Kareen Musa and Steven Springer. The Research Achievement Scholarship goes to McKenna Noel Marty and Steven Springer. The NCEF Scholarship goes to Kareen Musa and Steven Springer. The HSPS Scholarship for the Air Force goes to Jessica Doctor, Eileen Lai, Melinda W. Ng, and Ryan Su. The HSPS Scholarship for the Army goes to Shane Blunk, Brittany Randall, and Nicholas Sajbin. The HSPS Scholarship for the Navy goes to Oscar Solis Escobedo Jr. Casey Garrett, and Ava Catherine Mokhtari. The HSPS Scholarship for the NHSC goes to Fia Zong. The OME Best Preceptor Teaching Award goes to Dr. Biljinder 
Chima of Family Medicine and Dr. Virag Shah of Emergency Medicine. For the Master of Pharmaceutical Science program, the MPS Class of 2021 Valedictorian Award goes to Michael Roche. The Dean's Academic Excellence Award goes to Satori Iwamoto. The MPS Research Award goes to Olivia Wu. The MPS Students Leadership Award goes to Natalie Chavez. The MPS Community Service Award goes to Bahar Kaur Muhar. Congratulations again to all of our awardees and graduates. This concludes this afternoon's California North State University Commencement Ceremonies. Please exit the arena and meet your graduates for your personal congratulations outside. Be well, be safe, and go Kings!